everybody, Dave Monahan, Goods and Tools and Supplies, and time again for another Tech Lab Tuesday. Today, we're going to talk about counterboring and specifically adjustable counterboring tools. Now, we've all been doing, I should clarify, seat counterboring uh, operations for years and years and years. We all grew up in the uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s with these fixed braised carbide counterbore cutters. They've been around forever. They're hanging right on your tool board over there. They have uh, upgraded over the years to be indexable. We have actual uh, rotating carbide tips here that are held on with a, with a special screw. And if we chip that or break it during a machining operation, say on a Saturday, all we do is unro uh, undo that screw, rotate that cutter and we've got a new cutting edge we can go ahead and complete that job but these were all fixed they were a predetermined size as time moved on i we and i have to say i because i helped design this tool many many years ago with a guy named chris parnham he was son of the idl founder quite the engineer in his own right and i was in canada one night and uh we took both the great ideas of the IDL adjustable counterbore kit and the Winona Van Norman adjustable counterbore kit, and we came up with this one, and we called it the DWA, and uh, the DWA 300, and it is an, a fully adjustable and inductible, indexable, excuse me, counterbore kit for cutting out the valve seat rings in both aluminum or cast iron cylinder heads, and it's our DWA 300. Now this tool comes with a precision direct reading micrometer. Uh, it has a range of 1 250 up to 2 inch 750. And the these kit are... comes with four of these adjustable counter board cutters. And that takes you from a range of 1 250 to 2 inch. Now again, like I said, they're fully adjustable. Uh, we set them with this precision micrometer. As I mentioned before, it's a direct reading micrometer. We even give you the standard that sets the uh, uh, the system at 1250, a precision standard that goes in here. That way you can always know and calibrate if needed that your setting tool and micrometer are spot on dead nuts. Because remember, if you're not measuring, you're just guessing. So as I wanted to get you in here uh, a little bit closer to see uh, the precision of this micrometer. I've got a built-in dial indicator so I can check radius. As, uh, as I'm moving uh, this in a circle pattern to catch the furthest outreach of this cutter, that's what this dial indicator does. Our, mic our setting standard right here is set at 1, 250. Our direct reading micrometer, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've already done some adjustment, and right now I've got this thing precisely set at that 1 inch 250 mark. It's really quite simple to remove this, the standard, and in this particular case, I want to set a 1, 500 counterboard. So I need to move my micrometer here, thusly. You can see, I don't know if you can see these numbers or not. Here's 1,350, and there's 1,500 coming up on the dial right there, right now. And you can see, as I've got my indicator looking for maximum radius, I'm sitting right at zero, or 1 inch 500. The beauty of this counterbore cutter, as you see, we've got vertical hold down screws here, and then we have a horizontal a set screw here. What I like to do is, is loosen this one, this one slightly, put a little bit of tension on there, and then I'll use this tool, this Allen wrench here, to move that one set screw to bring the cutter to make contact with this indicator base, and matching up with my micrometer setting, I'm at 1, 250, 0, 0, 0 on that dial indicator. So I precisely set that. Of course, when I'm done, I will take this out, lock this down, give it another little tweak there and there. And I've gone through a complete setup to ensure that I'm going to cut a perfect 1.500 dimension valve seat counterbore so I can put my new seat ring in. Grab your drive tool. In this particular case, on this machine here, the PH2000, we use a number three tapered drive. It has these uh, dog drives here. I call them dog ears because they fit into this slot. This is 9 16 OD. That's a 9 16 ID 562 for those of you keeping score at home. 
This particular uh, drive has a .375 ID in it for the valve guide pilots. It's gonna go into the valve guide of the particular cylinder head we're working on. We run this at a low RPM, uh, generally around 50 or less uh, RPMs. We cut dry and we go through, set our depth stop, and uh, voila, we have a fresh counterbore waiting to accept that brand new seat ring that you're going to put in there. So lots going on with the DWA 300. It is a must tool in today's world because you've got your, your metric sizes to deal with out there. You've got your diesel applications, and those seats have been available in 10, 20, and 30 thousandths over for, for quite some time. And, and the fixed cutters, there's nothing wrong with the fixed cutter as long as it happens to be conveniently the correct size. But keep in mind that Adjustable counterbore cutters are the way to go with today's uh, late model applications, aluminum and cast iron. And uh, this will get the job done accurately, not once in a while, but each and every time. So if you have questions, give us a call at 1-800-533-8010 or better yet, catch us on the web at Goodson.com. want to say thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.